I'm with Jenny Smith, who's the CEO for the Council for Homeless Persons in Victoria, which is a peak body organisation based on advocacy for homelessness issues. Uh, the Council also publishes the journal Parity, which is one of the major publications in the nation um, focused on advocating for homeless people. Jenny, we all have this particular vision in mind about what homelessness is, chiefly one of people living on the street. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if you could give us an insight into the different forms it can take. Yeah, look, thanks, Joseph. And um, it never ceases to amaze me um, when I'm talking to people um, in the community about homelessness, um, how much people have that um, idea in their mind that it is about people sleeping rough mm. and that it's about uh, people deserving to be homeless or wanting to be homeless, you know, choosing that as a lifestyle. And it just isn't true. Um, more and more these days, uh, you know, people who are experiencing homelessness are women and children uh, leaving family violence, um, young people um, leaving home for whatever reasons. Um, every night in Australia there are over 100,000 uh, 100, people who are homeless and here in Victoria uh, over 20,000 people. It is a diverse group of people. Um, about 9% of them are uh, people sleeping rough. About 40% are women and children uh, leaving family violence by and large. Um, about 30% are young people um, leaving home. Um, the other um, people experiencing homelessness are people with mental illness, people with addictions, uh, people with disability, people with an acquired brain injury, uh, people who've recently left prison, uh, people who are, um, have a, an, an additional complexity in their life um, other than economic disadvantage, um, who find themselves homeless. I and mean, that's an extraordinarily diverse type of people um, who are experiencing this as an issue. But what are the kind of uh, specific challenges that some of those different types of people may face that others don't? The small group of people who um, are sleeping rough or um, experience homelessness over a long period of time who um, we might call a chronically homeless, if you like. It is a um, small group of people but a very significant population in the amount of um, time that's involved for them and the amount of community resources that might be directed um, to attempting to assist those people over a period of time. Um, at the other end of the continuum, um, women and children escaping family violence. Again, a permanent housing solution is really important. Um, support particularly at the front end, including um, assistance with um, finding the money to get a bond um, getting those first few months rent in rental accommodation, having support to make that transition um, from having been in a, uh, a family home to finding you haven't got anything to go on with and getting back on your feet, um, keeping the family safe, keeping the kids in school, um, keeping the social capital that is available to that family intact and ongoing is really important. Um, for kids um, and youth, it can be really about um, reconnecting um, with family wherever possible, maximising the um, opportunities that young people have uh, not to lose their family at this time in their life. I mean, for some kids, it is going to be um, a huge dislocation with the family, and it is when they've left home and, and become homeless, but it m might not have to be the end of it. Putting the resources in at that time to maximise reconnecting, to again keep those young people safe and supported and able to reconnect with training, um, have an opportunity to continue to participate in the community uh, socially and economically is really important. The responses are a little bit different for um, the different groups of people, however you, you know, cut them up. Mm. Um, but there are some ingredients that are the same regardless of who it is. It's about permanent housing, not temporary solutions, and it's about the right amount of support at the right time. So are there differences between um, the challenges that people face within an urban environment or a rural environment? Rural communities are increasingly challenged by pockets of disadvantage and um, some of the uh, 
you know, what the economists call structural adjustments that are happening in rural communities are um, quite um, profound and um, having a very big impact. And that means that, you know, people are falling out of work um, and that even something like, um, you know, the desal plant down in um, Gippsland means that um, more affordable housing is being taken up by, say, the workers um, rather than people looking um, for something that they can afford um, in the local community. Um, in the city, you know, you've got, you know, rooming houses and um, um, a range of, of options in, in rural areas. Um, you're much more likely to find uh, people uh, in caravan parks, um, some of the more affordable motels and other kinds of arrangements like that than you, than you do in the city. I mean, you have couch surfing in both uh, metro and rural areas, but it's probably even more um, common, um, common in, in, in rural areas than it is in, in metro. Mm. So what are some of the different um, physical and mental health challenges that homelessness poses? Well, the research on, on mental health um, shows both that if you have a mental illness you are uh, more at risk of social disadvantage and, and hence homelessness and it also shows that if you become homeless for a range of other reasons that being homeless is going to affect your mental health over time. Um, and so um, I think it's really important to understand that when we're talking homelessness we are talking the sort of um, disadvantage you know like um, having a mental illness is going to make you more vulnerable um, to experiencing that and therefore your pathway out of uh, homelessness is going to require um, both a housing response and, and some tailored su support um, that assists you to uh, make sure that you're getting the, the um, uh, medical and uh, psychosocial support that you need to um, maintain um, a home. Uh, and also that if you are unlucky enough to um, find yourself homeless um, for because um, there's been uh, an economic crisis or some other sort of crisis in your life that it is having an impact on you in terms of your mental health and you are going to need that type of support um, as well as um, assistance with um, finding a house and a home and um, getting yourself back on your feet. It is really quite um, a traumatic experience and lots of people who um, are experiencing chronic homelessness um, you find have had significant histories of trauma in their lives and lots and lots of challenging experiences throughout their lives. Are there kind of a specific set of um, physical pathologies that result from living on the streets or having insecure housing? Well, um, being homeless is not good for your health. Yeah, yeah. It's not good for your mental health. It's not good for your health. Um, our Colleagues um, providing health services to people experiencing homelessness find all sorts of difficulties um, around um, everything from uh, dental health, uh, nutrition, um, you know, various infections that people have, um, as well as, you know, people attending to the sorts of health conditions they might have, you know, knowing they've got a heart condition, knowing that they should be, you know, managing it in a particular way. Um, and even if knowing that you've got a condition, um, you know, struggling with um, um, staying in different places, not being in stable accommodation, um, doesn't help you um, sort of planfully um, manage your health and take your medication and um, eat and um, drink in the way that you probably should um, if you've got diabetes or you know trying to maintain a chronic health condition. You mentioned earlier um, singled out women and children as being one of the uh, kind of key um, targets I suppose of initiatives for homelessness. Um, I wonder if you could uh, tease out a little bit the impact of violence experienced particularly by those people. Well um, you know Family violence is largely about women um, being the victims. It's not entirely, but it is um, uh, predominantly. 
and you know that is a structural part of our society and uh, it, it's something that um, sits uncomfortably with us I think um, well, because what you find with um, family instability is that uh, you know, kids fall out of school if um, um, a family's in a refuge for a significant period of time or in transitional housing for a, a long period of time and that's a long way from where they were living. Mum can spend the whole day um, getting the kids to school on public transport, you know, going home, coming back to get the kids from school on public transport, um, going back again. Uh, if you're in a motel um, temporarily, um, just those logistics about keeping um, life on the road and uh, keeping everyone engaged in uh, the education or training or um, maintaining work or seeking work, they all become quite lo logistically complicated when you know, the family household breaks up and people find themselves without resources. Family life these days um, at the um, end of the scale where you've got less money than the average family is pretty tough to try and make ends meet. Uh, rentals um, are uh, often two thirds, three quarters of the, the family income. Um, we regard families as being in uh, rental stress when the um, uh, cost is more than a third of you know, the income that, that uh, the individual family has. Um, you know, that's uh, it's very unusual for families to only be paying that much mm. in the rental market these days. So would it be fair to say that low income or even class was the most significant variable um, resulting in people's experiences of homelessness or are there all sorts of other variables that could uh, cause those experiences? Well I guess I've talked about the range of um, challenges that people can have mm. but the um, I think really important thing for us to understand is that housing is less affordable in Australia and in Victoria than it's ever been before. Um, a house, to buy a house these days is um, more than seven times um, the average annual income. It's never been that high. Um, the cost of uh, rental accommodation is completely unaffordable for many, many families. Um, access to public housing um, is uh, about um, 65,000 households in public housing and there's um, 38,000 households on the waiting list for public housing in Victoria. Um, the, you know, similar for um, social housing, you know, community operated housing. Um, so access to affordable housing is a very, very difficult problem. And so we're seeing families that wouldn't otherwise have been um, squeezed out of their rental and uh, looking for um, accommodation that, you know, further and further out, um, further and further away from um, the social capital, the, the, the supports that they've had in friends and family and with all of the logis logistical problems that come with that. Mm. Well given that you know affordable housing is clearly such a, a, an intuitive and even obvious um, part of the solution uh, to the problem of homelessness you know one wonders why the government doesn't do more about it. I mean wh what kind of initiatives does the government make in terms of addressing these, these issues? Well uh, the State government at the moment is looking at how to um, try and address um, an affordable um, supply of housing, but it's not easy and it's been something that um, while federal and state governments have invested over the years, probably the, the level of investment, um, there, there, there was an injection um, um, in response to the global financial crisis, which has been very welcomed and is um, has made some difference, but it's still um, we need probably that sort of injection every year mm. um, to have have the balance uh, right. Um, we would love to see governments invest more in public housing, and we would like to see them invest more in um, social housing. You know, run by community uh, organisations and uh, seen support tailored into those um, 
facilities to assist the range of people that I've been discussing. But we haven't seen that over a long period of time, so we're a long way behind. Um, and so we've also really got to look at um, how we um, support people um, and subsidise them in um, private rental accommodation, both in the short, medium and uh, long term. And I think we've also got to build on um, the ideas that are around uh, in terms of uh, stimulating um, private development, invo involvement in um, developing affordable housing and uh, uh, encouraging um, things like um, superannuation um, funds, um, feeling comfortable enough to invest in um, affordable housing and lo unlocking some of those potential investment funds into this type of investment. That's going to require again um, government involvement to make those companies feel comfortable enough to do it. But they're the type of mix um, of initiatives that's really required. Mm. So I mean um, some of these problems are, are clearly systemic in as much as you know there, there are all sorts of external variables that would have to come into play to be able to provide a solution. Um, but are there problems that are just kind of political in as much as the government doesn't consider it to be you know is it's not a vote winner to go and do something they could do something but they choose not to? Well, I think um, I think to some extent it goes back to the comment I made at the start about um, community attitudes um, towards homelessness. Um, you, know, you can criticise governments for not making a sufficient investment, but in in some sense they're reflecting what they regard as our collective will. And I think it's really important that we. Um, communicate as effectively as we can about what homelessness is and who it is that's homeless. And um, there are, is still a sense of um, the deserving and the undeserving homeless. And nobody wants to be homeless and no one deserves to be homeless. And I think governments will invest on our behalf um, to the extent that they think that we want them to. Um, so there you know, would be a view that um, there, there are people in public housing that don't deserve to be there. Um, our view is uh, that you know, the level of disadvantage these days for people to be eligible to go into public housing is very, very high. And um, while no system's perfect and there will always be the exception, um, by and large the right people are um, getting access. It's just that there are many more people that need that level of support than we're having. So we would like to see that type of investment, but I do think um, Part of the uh, reality of where we are as a country and a state in terms of how expensive our housing is, it's going to take that range of public and private responses. Mm. Perhaps you could uh, talk us through some of the examples of the initiatives that the Council for Homeless Persons is taking to try and mitigate the problem of homelessness. Well, the Council for Homeless Persons is the uh, peak organisation for the specialist homelessness service system uh, in Victoria, and that. Um, that system provides a support to people who are homeless uh, on their pathway um, back into being housed and, and having a home, as well as um, to some extent providing some of that, that housing. Um, our job is to uh, do our best to influence um, federal and state um, public policy in the area. Um, we also um, have a role in um, advocacy around complaints that, that occur within that um, service system and we um, train and equip uh, people who have experienced homelessness to um, speak publicly and um, play their role in influencing um, policy and practice um, in, um, in homelessness in the sector and uh, in, in terms of um, policy. Um, as you know we also um, produce a national um, publication um, uh, on homelessness, parity, um, which um, goes all around the country and beyond um, about ten times a year, um, canvassing a whole range of issues um, around homelessness. How does um, Australia fare internationally with in terms of homelessness? I mean you've alluded to the fact that we've got some very high housing for example, um, but are there responses 
to that kind of problem that we do better than other people or other things that you know other countries other you know allegedly developed nations do better that we could emulate yeah I think we um, we have shown quite a lot of leadership um, nationally and internationally um, around innovative models of responding uh, to homelessness and we um, have explored um, and have some very very fine um, services in um, the, the transitional um, housing space and, and support. Um, and we are in the throes of um, demonstrating some very important models around permanent housing and support and also adding um, um, some of the therapeutic components into that around um, some of the trauma that um, uh, people have experienced um, on their way to becoming homeless and during their um, time of experiencing homelessness. Um, the next step for us is to actually um, identify the key service components that we need um, in ending homelessness uh, in the country and scaling them up. Um, and certainly in Victoria, um, the government's very interested in looking at that. And what we've got to try and do is uh, make sure that in these um, times of considerable um, financial restraint, by governments that we um, do hang on to the very important um, and shining aspects of our, our service system um, as well as the nuts and bolts and um, move forward with some of those um, very strong examples and turn them into a system. Mm. I suppose one of the problems that we um, face when we're looking at the issue of homelessness is it feels like this kind of out there systemic problem. But what are some of the things that those of us who are lucky enough to be secure in our living arrangements can do in order to mitigate the problems of homelessness? Well, I think it's, um, it is a public attitude um, challenge in the end. I think those ideas about um, people wanting to be homeless, people deserving um, to be homeless. Um, I think it's important for us to continue that communication as best we can um, to unpack that. And I think when we're talking about um, family violence, people experiencing mental illness, addiction, intellectual disability, having been in prison. Uh, they're all things that um, we all are connected to people who've experienced that in some way. Um, I think there's less stigma about those um, members of our family and friends and extended networks than there used to be. But there is still, I think, a challenge um, in owning our connections to those experiences. And I think it's in doing that uh, that we make it possible um, to accept that um, people experiencing homelessness are us. Mm. They're not different people. They are, uh, they are us um, by force of the circumstances and, and the experiences that have befallen them. And I think in um, owning um, who we are and, uh, and accepting it, that it's not the other, it, that they are um, people who've been unfortunate enough to have um, a certain set of experiences and um, opportunities and challenges that we will then own the solutions and accept that um, homelessness in our affluent society isn't acceptable and that we it, the solutions are very much within our grasp. Um, they are relatively straightforward, it's not rocket science. It's about um, housing, it's permanent, with the right levels of support for people when they need it, not when they don't need it, uh, for the amount of time for which they need it. And we can, we can do that. We, we are doing it. It's not something that's unaffordable. Um, it's something that's uh, well within our grasp and that we really should be doing. Well, it's, um, it's nice to hear that things are achievable, um, even if it seems somewhat elusive. Um, well, thank you very much for being with us today. My pleasure, Joseph.